The main focus for new vegans should always be eliminating meat, dairy and eggs. It is not always practical or financially possible to replace every non-vegan product that has already been purchased. The damage is already done once the product is bought. But once you deeply connect with veganism, it often becomes uncomfortable to wear clothing made from animals. And as clothing becomes old and worn out, you have a responsibility to replace old products with more ethical ones. The main industries which use animals for clothing are the fur, leather, wool, down and silk industries. Most animals used for fur live and die on fur farms. Animals like mink, rabbits and foxes are kept in small cages, which causes a lot of physical and emotional stress. They are fed meat byproducts unfit for human consumption, and they are killed in ways which protect their fur. So methods like neck breaking, poisoning and anal electrocution are common. While fur clothing is becoming less fashionable, fur trim coats and boots are still popular. Although finding faux fur should be simple, it is often cheaper to produce real fur than faux fur, so some companies lie about their materials, meaning a product labelled as fake fur could still be made from an animal. The easiest way to avoid fur is to buy clothing without any kind of fur or faux fur, but if you do want to buy something, you can look on the Humane Society's list of certified faux fur companies, and if you pull the hair back you will see either a skin or fabric backing. If you want to be certain about it once you've purchased it, cut a few pieces of hair off and burn it. If it's real, it'll smell like burnt human hair. If it's fake, it'll smell of plastic. If you find that it is real, you can take it back to the shop where you purchased it. The fur industry has become a popular target for activists to criticize. Shame on you for supporting the fur industry. But the leather industry is just as cruel. People think that leather is merely a byproduct of the beef industry, but there is such a demand for leather that the animals are killed specifically for their skin. And most leather comes from India cows. To transport them to a place where they can be legally murdered, cows are shooed and roped, then are forced to walk through the heat and dust without food or water. Many animals collapse from the stress of this. When they become weak and slow, their tails are repeatedly pinched and broken in a sick attempt to get them moving. Handlers are in such a hurry that they use nose ropes and twist their necks and tails. They also use chili peppers and tobacco to keep the animals moving. They rub the pepper directly in their eyes in order to get the animal back on their feet. The men that load them into the trucks are often forceful and rough. The new experience of traveling combined with the lack of food and water leads to severe nausea. Half the animals are already dead before they arrive at the slaughterhouse. They are generally killed through hacking and sawing with a dull blade and are usually killed in full view of each other. Leather can be sourced from many different animals including alligators, sheep, pigs and deer. And there are many different names for different types of leather like buckskin, suede and shell cordovan. In spite of the incredible harm the leather industry causes, real leather has become a symbol of quality. So clothing made from vegan materials are often coated with a tiny amount of cow skin so they can be labelled as real leather to increase sales and the market price. Leather is probably the most common non-vegan material, found in all kinds of clothing like bags, shoes, belts, jackets and gloves. Since leather is more expensive than synthetic alternatives, products are usually labelled as real leather, which is easy to spot and avoid. Cheap products like shoes, bags and wallets are often made from pleather, which is plastic leather. There are also fake leather products made from PVC and higher quality products made from materials like cork, kelp and microfiber. There seems to be a myth that all faux leather products are inferior to cow skin. And while cheap, poorly produced faux leather does break down quicker due to cheaper substitute ingredients being used in the manufacturing process, high quality leather alternatives are strong and durable and have a long lifespan. Most clothing will have a clear label, for shoes, look on the inside of the heel or the underside of the tongue. There should be a stamp somewhere saying something like leather upper or all man-made materials, although sometimes there are just stickers with symbols. If it's made of textile, man-made materials or other materials, they won't contain leather. But don't be afraid to email companies or ask in shops. Most people think that wool is just like a haircut for sheep, so it can't be unethical. But just like the fur and leather industries, the wool industry is driven by profit, so the most efficient methods will always be used. Sheep in the wool industry have been genetically modified to produce far more wool than they actually need. This is a lot like breaking someone's leg and then giving them a wheelchair and expecting praise. And regular shearing causes nicks and cuts, and in order to prevent the excess attraction of flies in a condition called fly strike, the wool industry practices mule sing. This is a cruel procedure in which part of a sheep's flesh is cut off of his or her hindquarters without anaesthesia. 
When sheep get older, they stop producing as much wool and they're sent off to slaughter, as they're no longer seen as profitable. Just like leather, wool is a very common material, which is found in things like coats, jumpers, socks, and hats. You can buy or knit clothing using materials like rayon, cotton, hemp, linen, and bamboo, as well as synthetics like acrylic, nylon, and microfiber. Just make sure to check the label and avoid clothing containing any types of wool. The down industry plucks feathers from geese and ducks, which causes considerable pain and distress. While their feathers are being torn out, their skin is often torn open, because the workers are always instructed to be as quick as possible. Buying down also supports the foie gras industry, as producers profit by selling the feathers of the force-fed ducks and geese. Down feathers are found in coats, jackets, and other insulated products. But fortunately, there are plenty of coats made of materials like cotton and polyester with synthetic insulation like Primaloft and Thinsulate. So look on the label or item description for down or words like duck and goose, and then look for alternative products. In the silk industry, billions of potentially sentient silkworms are steamed or gassed alive in their cocoons every year, so that we can use their silk to make clothing. Silk is found in clothing like dresses, scarves, and underwear but there are plenty of alternatives made from materials like rayon, nylon, milkweed seed pod fibers, tensils, silk cotton tree filament, saber tree filament, polyester, and lyocell. Also avoid the other silk containing materials which are listed below. Most everyday clothing items are made from materials like polyester, cotton, and acrylic, and are vegan. For example, most t-shirts and trousers are made of cotton, and a lot of jumpers and hoodies are made from acrylic or polyester and cotton. Although it might seem like an extra effort checking labels initially, you'll quickly get to know which products and materials are and aren't vegan, so eventually it'll be effortless. But for some products like shoes and belts, you might need to look online. It's not widely known, but a lot of shoes made from vegan materials do contain animal-based glues. By emailing a company, you might be able to find out, but in many cases, not even the companies know what the glues are made of. The good news is that synthetic glues are now replacing animal-based glues, so don't let this discourage you. Just always do the best you can. In the booklet below, I've included links to all the best online stores for buying vegan shoes and clothing. It's important to mention that vegans should always strive to buy the most ethical and environmentally sustainable clothing possible. We're all accustomed to buying extremely cheap yet unethical products, so buying vegan, organic, and fair trade clothing can seem too expensive for most people. The best way to overcome this is by buying secondhand vegan clothing from charity shops. And it's also a good idea to become a minimalist and only buy clothing that you really need. This is the most ethical and environmentally sustainable way to live. Some vegans believe that secondhand leather or wool products are acceptable to purchase. And while they do technically cause no extra harm to animals, they do help promote the idea that animals should be commodified. If you're not okay with wearing shoes made from an abused and killed human skin, you shouldn't be wearing cowskin shoes either. Just as with vegan cosmetics, Keep in mind that many new vegans choose to use up and wear out old non-vegan products. It's okay to do this. Don't let arrogant people try to call you out for being inconsistent. Remind them that veganism is about eliminating animal products as far as possible and practicable. Wearing out old clothing doesn't undermine your ethics. As always, check out the booklet below which contains more detailed information and links to vegan-friendly shops. I also have complete guides to vegan food and vegan cosmetics, so check those out too. And if you want to help support me in creating helpful resources like this one, which take weeks to make, please visit my Patreon page and consider donating. And if you need help progressing to a vegan lifestyle, email me or add me on Skype. Thank you for watching.